it's Scott with the Board Games Maelstrom. Today we're going to take a look at the three to five player game, The Flow of History by Tasty Minstrel Games and game designer Jesse Lee. In this game, you're going to do your best to build your civilization and be a higher, have a higher score than all your other opponents. Um, let's go down to the table and take a look at how this plays. All right, we're down at the table now. Let us take a look at this game and how it sets up. Um, I've got set up for right now, I have a three player game. Um, normally they wouldn't all be together like this, you'd be spread out, but for camera purposes and filming purposes, I got them all right next to each other. Um, what you see here is uh, the deck, and the deck is always set up the same way. Um, at the very bottom you have the future, you have the internet, then you move into all the H5 cards, H4 cards, each of these will be shuffled individually and then put in H3, H2, and H1 cards. You can put these in a pile. The HA cards are dealt out into the market. Now the market can be arranged in any way you want it to be. Now the five antiquities cards will be dealt out in a, in a three player game. In a uh, three, four player game, in a player five player game what you would do is you'd deal out the very first H1 card. As you, your market could be set up any way you want. I mean, it really isn't, doesn't, it doesn't have to be set up in a line. When I played it with my family, we set it up in a line. It seemed to be a little bit more easy to understand, but you could set it up like this. Wouldn't matter as long as there's five cards in a three to four player game and six cards in a five player game. Anyway, you could set them up like this. You could set them up like this. There's different types of cards that you can get. There are these cards, which are wonders. In this case, this antiquities card has the pyramids on it. Um, there are these cards, which are leaders. Um, in this uh, case, Ramses II is the leader card. There are these cards, which are military. And these cards right here, which are, I believe it's a science card, knowledge. Um, and then there are these cards, which is a, uh, this is a building card. Um, and then also you have the card that you, everybody gets a randomly dealt S card, which is a starting government. And uh, the first player has aristocracy, um, seafaring traders, and a religious tribe. Each of these focuses on a different thing as you start out. Um, the aristocracy starts um, off with a search for science. Um, the seafaring traders are, of course, trade, and the religious tri tribe is all about culture. Now, how this game works is when it is your turn, you can take two phases and one action. Um, how that action goes is let's just say the red player was first. On your turn, the first action you can take is to invest. And what you would do is you would place your turn marker on a card that you wish to have. Now, you'll notice the cards have different um, icons on them. And these are your different production icons. And anything under a magnifying glass on a card means that this is what you'll get as an investor bonus if you invest in the card and then bring it into your inventory. Um, so if, if the first player has a science icon already, what they might want to do is invest in working animals. Then they have to decide how much they want to invest. Anywhere from one to four, you can't invest zero. You have to invest uh, as many in as you think you can do and get away with somebody else not taking it from you. Now, the first player may choose to invest three because they really want that bonus, that investor bonus that they can get. And that is the first action you can take. The second action you could take is if you already have invested in a card out in the market, you may complete that. And what you'll do is you will pay the tokens that you have on it to your supply. And you will take your marker back and you will add this to your civilization. Um, if you already have the type of card that's there and you add a new one to your civilization, you would cover up that card. You would get to keep these production icons at the bottom. Well, not that one, because that was at the top. Um, 
but the effect that was on the beginning of the card, like like this effect, which is harvest um, a harvest action, you would that would take over whatever uh, effect you already had. Uh, the barracks provides you with uh, permanent uh, one defense. Um, warriors provide you with a one-time attack action and you can take money from someone. Um, the pyramids, the icons and the arrows off to the left are have different symbols in them. The uh, exclamation point symbol means that it's an immediate effect. The infinity symbol means that it's an ongoing effect and the hatchet icon means it's attack one and if there's like three hatchets inside of the arrow it means attack all. Um, the next action you can take is let's just say I was here and I had my my uh, resource tokens on that card I was going to take it but boy the seafaring traders for some reason really wanted that card this is what they would do they would uh, take and they would pay me the three resource tokens that were on the card these would immediately go to the supply and this is your uh, reserve nobody touches the reserve until effects come out that do that um, they would take the card I would, they would return my person to me my marker they would take the card and then I would get half of the remaining supply rounded down. In this case, it would be one. So now I would have five tokens to, or five resource tokens to go ahead and, and deal with buying something the next time. While the seafaring traders are now down to one, so they couldn't snipe me even if they tried. The next action you could take is to activate. Certain cards have gear icons on them. Let's see if I can find one. Air is one. And this one, I believe, is uh, is philosophy. And when you activate this, you're going to pay three coins, and you're going to get to add a green card, a green knowledge card into your into your civilization. But there's different different ones that'll come out. Uh, different leaders. Uh, here's one that you'll gain one yellow yellow card if you activate the gear icon. And then the last action that you can take. Let's pop these back up here. All right. The last action that you can take is you can harvest. And what you would do is you would count how many resource or how many harvest icons you had in your uh, civilization. Let's just say at this point in time it's only one, but let's just say he had four harvest tokens and he chose the harvest action. What you do is you would take four out of the reserve, add them to the supply, and then you would then take half of those into your into your money, and that's how you gain money. And that's how you get the tokens out of the reserve into the supply. Um, every time you add a new card um, in the cleanup phase, after a card is taken out of the market, it gets replenished. Um, then you perform what's an age check. So let's just say that an age three card had come out. Well, let's, let's actually let's go with the age two card. Let's just say an H2 card had come out into the market. Now, you have to do a, a two-age backwards check, um, which would mean antiquities. Any antiquities cards that weren't invested in at the current time would be discarded out of the game. And then they would be replenished from the supply. Basically, you, got, you go on and on. In this case, you're getting a uh, extra culture token and then if you were to add uh, no, this would be actually the other way around you had the uh, barracks and you had an attack icon with it and then you built this building it would cover up the defense that you had 
and would replace it with a culture token, but you would also get two more culture tokens down here that would count for investing bonuses, and that's another thing I need to go into. And by all means, do not try to learn the entire game from me. I'm just trying to go over the stuff that I can think of that will help, you know, give you an idea and overview of what, what the game is so that, you know, if you like it and you think you, you can look deeper into it. But I'm not giving you all the rules. Um, what we have is uh, as you replenish cards into the market, some cards have different effects. Um... This card right here, the Warriors, has a investor bonus icon of science. So when you take this, if you successfully invest in this, you get the investor bonus. But had there been a science icon on this, it does not count. When you add it into your civilization, anything that happens in here would count the icons that it has on it. But the ones that are there before would not count. You basically go through the, through the deck back and forth, people taking cards into their civilization, until you get through age four, and age five, and come upon the internet. The internet goes out, and then the future is shown. Um, this is one of the end conditions of the game. And at that point, at the end of the game, everybody would count up everything they had. And I'm going to take a look in the book just to make sure I do not, um, do not give you any wrong information. I'm old. I forget things. Um, all effects with an obsolete icon on them. I don't know if I don't think I have any that are out here. Uh, basically, it's a circle with a line through it. Those those things go away. Like say, if you had a couple of permanent. Uh, um, science icons and it had that obsolete next to it, you wouldn't count those in endgame scoring. Each culture is worth a victory point that you have that you're showing in your cards. Um, you count the total number of other production icons that you have. Every two icon is a one victory point. And then you would activate all the effects with the um, endgame symbol on it, which is this uh, Omega symbol, the end of the Greek alphabet. Um, and in this case, for every wonder you have, you get one culture, which would translate into points. Um, and each icon, you culture icon you gain it in this way is worth a victory point. And the player with the most victory points wins the game. It's, uh, there's a lot to this game but it's not as involved as, say, Through the Ages or Civilization. Um, you're still getting that civilization building uh, feeling, you know, that you're building up your, your, your civilization. You're still getting that feeling, but you're not dealing with all that comes with one of those larger games. And it's also playing in, in half to a quarter of the time as those larger games would play. Um, Let's go back up from the table and get my final thoughts on this. All right, back up. Here we are. Um, we just took a look at the flow of history by Tasty Minstrel Games and by, des by designer Jesse Lee. Um, you wouldn't think that there was so much in just basically a box of cards, um, but it, it, it has the feel of the large civilization games like Through the Ages or Civilization but it, it does it in a fairly concise amount of time. Um, let's see what the time is. 60 to 90 minutes. Uh, you're not getting through a game of Through the Ages in that short a time, and especially if you're at the lower player count. Um, you can probably get this done in an hour once everybody understands the game. But uh, Tasty Minstrel Games is uh, a company that I really like. They they usually do very well on their games. I've enjoyed every one that I've, uh, I've reviewed. This one is no different. Um, I'm going to give this a category 4 out of 5 Storm. Um, it's uh, They have a deluxe version out if you really like this game. They have a deluxe version with some pimped out pieces. But uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, this is something that it, it seems like it, it, it's a little box, but there's a lot of game in this little box. 
and it's it's a lot that that you have to look over and it, there's a lot of choices and it, it reminds you of the larger civilization games without all the all the uh, heavy rules I mean there are rules to this but you know every game has to have rules <laughs> but uh, it, it feels bigger without the the heaviness I mean it's there it's there if you want it there's a lot of strategy but it's not overwhelming I guess is what I want to say so um, yeah by all means uh, if if you like civilization games if you like card games this is this is a good one for you I would go pick this up this is out now um, I believe they're gonna have it at Origins and this is one of the uh, I think they're gonna have this for sale at Origins um, maybe even might be able to get the deluxe edition who knows but uh, I will be going to Origins here uh, next week I believe and uh, we'll take a look at some other tasty minstrel games while they're there all right for now, this has been the Board Games Maelstrom Category Review. I'm Scott. Thanks for stopping by.